Now we're about to begin our on east part of our system. We are going to show you some fundamentals, some basic drills, and these drills, after we get through showing you these drills, we're going to show you how you can put these drills into empty hand or weapons or anything you have in your hand, really, application with it. You'll be able to take it with a stick, a short stick, telescopic umbrella, knife, pocket knife, folding knife, straight blade, keys, comb, brush, anything you have in your hand, how to apply these movements to any particular situation. It's very, very, very important that you look beyond the stick because when you're learning a, when you're learning a weapon, you're not trying to just master that weapon. You are trying to master the movements of the weapon because it's the movements that you take out of the stick that you will be able to apply because we don't expect you to be walking down the street with 26 inch or 27 inch on these sticks. So you don't, don't come from that frame of mind and don't have that concept, well, this has no value because, oh, I don't want to practice on these because I'm not walking around the street with a set of these in my hand, 26 inches or 30 inch sticks. You are mastering movement. It's the movement you will take that will give you all, your, all you need in outside self-defense situation. You're mastering movement, you are not mastering the stick. With that, I'm going to begin. So I also want to get that perfectly clear to you because it's very, very, very important that you understand what you're doing before you do it and what mental state to put your mind in for when you're learning so you can take it in, take in the knowledge. Because if you think that it doesn't have any value before you even start, then you're wasting your time and you're not going to get the maximum out of the training. So look beyond this for the moment and bear with me for a couple of minutes and then you will see the practicality of Arnis and what Arnis is all about. It's not just about swinging a bunch of sticks back and forth because you want to look pretty. It has a lot of value. I've been studying martial arts for a very long time, and this gave me a whole different concept, a whole different way to look at things outside in the self street self-defense situation. Very important because it's the only weapon that I know of that can even out. It asks you to do two things equally on both sides of your body at the same time. Okay, it evens out both sides of your body. Your other hand, where you, if you're left-handed or right-handed that you wouldn't use too much, now you're going to see you bring life to it. And with that, we'll get started. First drill, hold on out here. This is just to warm yourself up. we we'll run through quick. We're only going to do it for about 30 seconds, so it ain't going to be long and boring. So you're going to run through 30 seconds and then switch up to the next drill. By right? holding your hands in the middle of the stick, got your hands out. There, shoulders square. Try not to drop the stick. Try not to make the sticks tuck in at the bottom or tuck in at the top. You want to hold your hands out and you want to rotate the stick as far as you can forward and backwards. Just forward and backwards twisting. Forward and backwards twisting. Always remember one thing about when you're doing stick training, you always have to be light on your feet. You have to be relaxed. You can't do this and do this tense. Just like, just like doing jujitsu, just like doing judo. You can't have your body tense and think you're going to take a hard fall and, and come out of it okay. Not possible. You got to be light. You got to relax. You got to relax. Main thing is to relax. Relax, relax, relax. Okay, you're twisting. Twisting. Okay, working the wrist. Try to keep the arms straight. Don't let the arms droop down. Don't let the arms come up. Don't let the sticks tuck in at the bottom. Don't let the sticks tuck in at the top. Hold your arms out straight and just twist. Twist. Okay, how many? Stop. Now, the way we do it in the Vianna Jitsu system is we hold our stick two inches from the bottom. With four fingers from the bottom, and then you hold your stick from here. The purpose of that is because you understand you can use the back of the stick for hooking, for grabbing, button, striking with, because you want to utilize the whole entire weapon. If you see how my stick is taped off, I have a little piece of black tape to remind me more or less where to hold the stick because I want to make sure that I always give myself something at the bottom. Now, I want to show you the reason why I was telling you about holding the stick at the end of the butt. Very important you understand how to utilize the whole entire weapon and how to look beyond the stick. This was a gun for you who are law enforcement officers. It'll teach you a different way how to use your gun. The top of the gun, the bottom of the gun, and your hand. So you're utilizing the point to strike, the butt of the gun to strike, utilizing the base of your hand, top and bottom. Okay, that's if you're using a gun, if you're using a knife. I don't care if it's a pocket knife. You have the point to cut and slash with. You have the butt to strike with. You have the fist because you're holding it like you're making the fist. Now striking, button, and now here, punching with it in your hand. If you're using a comb, just a regular comb or brush. Here, you got the same thing, you brush. I don't got no hair, but we use it anyway. Here, you got the point, you got the scratching method, and you have the butt. 
Everything has two ends, and you learn how to utilize both ends. And the most common, what you see, is it has nothing to do with on each, right? That's where you're wrong. You got your Walkman. You have your Walkman on. You walk around the street like this, using the butt and the bass, and once again, the punching and the striking method of both sides because you have it in your hand. So you don't take it off or how or drop it down or what's going on. Utilize it, both ends. That's the purpose of learning how to utilize the whole stick, the whole entire weapon. Now we're going to move on into the Arnie's drills. Now we're going to move on. We started, remember, just to show you quickly again, we started with the twisting. Started with the twisting. A couple seconds. Then now for the twisting, we're going to go Yame down, grab our sticks in the proper range, bending our bodies, pointing the sticks up, up and down striking. It's very important. I'm going to keep going back and forth with the knife so you understand what I'm showing you and you utilize it in a different way. Up and down striking. When you strike up and down striking, you want to bring the point, keep the point of your weapon up all the time. I'll show you the value for this. It's a simple thing. It may not look like it's very important, but I'm going to show you how important it is. Up and down striking. Make sure the stick comes up to your ear and down. Up to your ear and down. When it comes down, it never does this. The point never goes towards the ground. You don't release on the wrist. You make sure you just keep it moving up and down striking with the point of the weapon going right towards your opponent. You move to your left, shifting, up and down striking. You come back to center after a minute or so, up and down striking. You want to work this hard, you just add more time. You can do it five minutes, two minutes, three minutes each drill. Turn to your right, moving up and down striking. Notice the point of the stick never does this. The arms are not dropping like this. Its point is always staying pointed straight towards your opponent. Very important, back to center. K and Yame. Now, if you were using this as a weapon, watch what I'm showing. If the weapon's chained. If I did this with the knife, my knife is now going towards the ground, pointed towards the ground. But when I did this, as I'm striking, the point stays up all the time in front of me and the opponent. Where's the, what's the big deal? Big deal is this. Look at my hand from the side. If I did this, weapon pointed towards the ground. When I swing and I keep this locked in here, and I learn to keep it locked all the time. When you're swinging at a person, people in the street, outside, when they swing, they do this. Swing, and then the wrist turns, and it goes past you. That's what makes the weapon go past you, because the wrist is turning. They're letting loose of the wrist. And they come in this way and letting loose of the wrist. You see the wrist again? Letting loose of the wrist. But when you keep your hand steady and you keep that locking motion, that up motion lock, when you swing like this, the weapon stays, boom, pointed towards the opponent. When you cut, always stay pointed towards the opponent because the weapon is always pointed towards your man because the wrist is locked. The wrist never bends for the weapon to move out. You want to all the time keep that wrist locked. And that is a great way. That is a great way for you to identify if someone knows or don't know. Now, Scott, can you please for a second, quickly, okay? If a person don't know in the street and he slashes at you, it'll look like something like this, where it'll pass you and move by. Boom, your arm will roll by, okay? But if a person does know, and you want to know if the person doesn't know, so this way you can start to approach it in a different manner, which is more like be humble and try to work, talk your way out of it, because you don't want to go up against anybody who know how to use a weapon or use a knife, especially a knife, okay? It'll look like this where he won't give you the opportunity of this clearance so you can enter or try to come back in. When he's motioning and moving, it'll be here. It'll stay all the time right in front of you. The wrist will always lock. And never, ever, ever do this. Turn. You'll never see this motion. So be aware of that. That's how you identify if a person know or don't know, just by that little locking motion. Moving on from the up and down striking. Remember, you had up and down striking, then you had now, you split your fanny, now you're moving into what we call loaded up. Now we're going to go what's called under and over. Under and over striking. Rib and collarbone. Rib, 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 collarbone. Rib. Collarbone. Now when you do this, as you get warmed up and the blood is coming down from this collarbone, you bend the body. Boom. Hit. Bend. Hit. 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 
Drop your weight on that final blow. 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 Hey, you go, Yame. One point I like to bring out about this strike. When you're striking, weapon ain't here. Because when your weapon is here, like this, I'm looking at the base and the bottom of both weapons, that gives me my point of attack. Right here. So you want to put it down. So you keep your hands up in front of you. But Scott, please. Point, bring your weapons up. Hand up. Look at how that looks from the front. So now in the street, I don't expect anybody to have two sticks. But let's say the guy got one stick and he cracked up like that. Because I can see the bottom of the stick, that's when I know I can come in and I can grab and I can try to hold. If it's like this, all he got to do is flick his wrist once again. Doesn't allow you that entry. But when you lift your hand up, whoa, I can stop. I can grab it. See the base of the stick, bottom of the stick. That gives me an opportunity to whoa, whoa, pass. And then go in from there to get ready to counter. Okay? So you don't want the bottom of your stick showing. The most of your drills, all your drills. At first, easier said than done. We'll do it out of bad habit. But don't worry about it. Try to be conscious of it so you work your way out of it. Okay? Moving on after up and down striking. Okay? Load it up. Triple striking. Looking to your left. Now you're looking to your left, you load up to your right. You're going to pull your hand out and you're striking low as you turn and pivot your body. Low. Striking right here into the waist area. That's one. Hand on top. Two. Sticks are always pointed towards the front. Three. Like you're climbing stairs. One, two, three. Again. One, two, three. Working right, left, right. One more time. Right, left, right. Now you're looking over your shoulder. And you notice where my left hand is. My left hand is not here. My left hand is here. I want to look over my shoulder, strike it for the closest point. I'm pushing. Left, right, left. Looking over my shoulder. Pivoting and pushing. Right, left, right. Switching. Left, right, left. Switching. Right, left, right. Switching. Left, right, left. Switching. Right, left. Right, switching, left, right, left, switching, low, middle, high, hit, and low, middle, high, hit, and low, middle, high, pushing, low, middle, high, pushing, low, middle, high, pushing, low, middle, high, hit, and low, middle, high, pushing, low, middle, high, hit, and low, middle, high, pushing, low, middle, high, hit, and low, middle, high, pushing, low, middle, yummy, good. When you're doing this drill, one important thing I like to point out, when you're striking, you don't want to do this. It was here. Strike from the closest point, right in, instead of bringing it back to go forward. Okay? Has a lot of value, very important. In the street situation, Master Willow, please, quickly. Right? If somebody's here on the side of you, you're talking, and you have two men in between you, and you know if you decide to strike from one point or the other, the men may be closer in on you to show you this from an angle. Here. Who do you hit first? Who are you going to hit first? Is it going to be this guy or is it going to be this guy? You're confronted. You just don't know. You don't want to do the obvious. You don't want to pick your hand up so you can strike or punch. No, because you're here. You can't go here, move. So you're trying to talk. You're trying to work your way out. And indirectly, without the person knowing, boom, boom, you're moving. And that's your triple striking because you're striking low, middle, boom, and high. And you're in and you're out. Simple as that. Because you know which way you're going to move. I may be looking this way, talking to him, trying to plead it to this man, appeal to this man. And this guy's right there, right on me. He's the one getting hit. He's the one getting hit. I'm like, guys, I don't understand. What's going on? And you're in, bang, and you're out. Simple as that. Because you're learning that triple motion. If I'm looking at it this way, this is the guy that's getting hit. Because for the moment, his attention is right here towards me. He's focused on me. He's watching my body. He's watching my hand. This guy's ready to back him up, or he's ready to back him up, depending upon which way I'm looking and which way my body's shifting. So it has a lot of value when you understand how to move from left to right, striking from the closest point. If my hands are here and I'm talking, it's down here. Striking from the closest point. This is closer here. This is closer to him here. This is closer to him here. I'm just moving. And then with the footwork and the motion, I'm out. Okay, now we're moving on. After we did this triple striking, now we're going to move on to the poking. When you do your poking, when you're doing your poking, and usually your poking should come right before you're doing your triple striking. You should have your poking in there. 
Poking is very important. We're going to move on to the poking method. Looking now to our left, pointing to our left, hands up. Knuckles facing each other, palms facing each other. You're poking. Counterclockwise. A weapon always comes to you. Best way to start out is top hand to you. Circular motion. Bring it to you. Circular motion. Bring it to you. Circular motion. Bring it to you. Top first. Weapon always comes to you. Never come away from you. Always come to you. To you. To you. To you. To you. Not a bottom one. Bring it, bring it to you. Bring it to you. In and out. Bring it to you. Bring it to you. Now you work one and then the other. 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 Poking. Poking. Point of your stick once again. Keep going, fellas. Pointing. Point of your stick always. Look at it. Look at if it's a, it's a knife. You don't want the blade down. Look how you got it. Palms up. Palms up. You want the blade facing towards the outside and the point going in and coming back around. In and around. In and around. Always bring the hand back to you. One and then the other. In and around. In and around. Okay, switch inside, switch. You alternate the same thing. Switching, always remember, when you switch, don't start going outside now because you switch. Weapon always comes towards you. Blade is always facing towards the man out there, and you're poking inwards to the man on the inside of you. Right here, you're poking. Okay, very important, switch inside. Then you want to poke from right to left, switch inside all the time. Now you're poking. Now you want to go up and down the body so you learn how to move up and down a person, up and down a person, poke it, up and down a person, up and down a person, bring the hand in, weapon in, remember that locked wrist thing I told you before, always in and out, switching sides, always poking up and down, it's called skill in the body, skill up and down the body, poking, 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 shake it out, yummy, yeah, very important, on poking, you want to remember, when you're poking, always come back to you, come back to you, come back to you, come back to you. That is so important. James, please. All right? The James, always very important. So once again, if you're using this with a closed object, with a short stick you might have in your hand, and you're hitting, boom, the hand always comes. It always comes back to you. So you're learning how to strike in this form, this motion, and the hand comes back to you. And notice, once again, it's not, it's not this, it's both hands. High, low, high, low, low, high, high, move here, stop up and down, so you know how to scale and work up and down the body, and the hand moves in the flowing motion. Here, if you're using a knife, there it is, it's the point. You're poking. If you're using a brush, it's the same thing. Here, boom. Notice when he's getting hit. Here. Once this hit here, this other hand is automatic. So when it's hit, boom, you continue the motion with the stick. Now, if you are like us, where we use a combination art, from after you strike, now it's jujitsu time. Lock him up. Throw him. Choke him out. It gives you what you want. It gives you an open. It gives you an opportunity to poke him. Notice the poking from here. If a guy stopped me from his shot, put your hand on my shoulder, please. Notice the poking. I don't have to turn around and go, huh? Yo, what do you want, guy? When it's here, it don't have to turn around. I just move, look, look, look at the poking motion. Bam, boom, he's hit. When I just strike, all I got is strike right there. It does, I don't have to turn. I don't have to turn. It's very important that you understand. This can come from the side, on the side angle. See the poke? It can come from here if we're straight on, double striking. It has a lot of value in the poking and learning how to flow your hand. It could be this first to get him to draw his attention. Put your stick down for one second, please. Motion causes motion. Motion causes motion. What do you think is going to happen if I did this to him? He's going to naturally try to block his hand. He has to. He has to. It's automatic motion. No one's going to let you hurt them. So when I did this, the hand moves. It went here. Here, now move up to here, now strike. Now I could go into now what I showed you before with the other stuff. We just constantly utilize what? The back and the front of the weapon. So every motion causes motion. Just because he stopped me here, don't mean it's over. Automatically, it's there. And then from there,